welcome to another edition of Sudson Country. Hi, I'm Herb Sudson. Welcome to the show, my friends. Today we're in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and we're standing here in front of the Mack Truck Museum. And Snowy Doe is right next to me. Snowy, how you doing? Good, very good. Thank All you. right. And Elizabeth, how you doing today? Oh, Herb, I'm always good when I'm uh, with you. I know you are. What's, what, what's going on, Elizabeth? Well, we're standing here at the uh, Mack Museum, and Snowy, why don't you give us a little oversight of what we're going to see today? Okay. Well, in here we have several vehicles. We have two kinds. We have Mack trucks in here, and Mack owned Brockway for a few years, and there's a few Brockway trucks in here. We've got some almost from the beginning and up through into the 70s. We've got uh, tractors, and we've got straight trucks, and all kinds, chain-driven trucks, and some that are uh, been around for many, many miles of, of all variations and all colors. Well, Snowy, we're inside the museum and we're standing next to a 1910 Brockway motor wagon, it's called. Tell us about this. Okay. Now, as you look at this machine, it was built like an old buckboard on the farm. The frame is made out of wood. It has wooden spoke wheels with solid rubber tires around the outside. It's double springed on the front. It's made, designed to ride carefully, ride nice. Uh, it was used as a general freight machine on a farm to carry hay and grain and anything you can think of, crates of hens or eggs. Now the steering is on the right. Yes, the very early machines were on the right. I'm not exactly sure when they changed from right to left, but our early machines, Brockway, this was on the right, and the early Max were also right-hand steer. Tell us quickly about the engine here. That's kind of a unique engine in here. Okay, that's a three-cylinder, 16 horsepower, air-cooled engine. There's no water in there at all. The flywheel has a big fan on it that blows air around the cylinders, <laughs> and the cylinders all have wings on them to catch the air to keep the engine cool. And that's pretty clever the way they put that together in 1910. Does that horn work? <laughs> There you go. I guess it works. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right. Snowy, we're standing next to a 1933 AB truck, and I'm not even going to pretend to know anything about trucks. So how would you tell me about the important features about this one? Okay. We have three ABs here in the museum. They're all a little different than the rest. This cab is, you look at it from the side, and it looks like the letter C. So these are called C model cabs. This has, this is a real modern job. You look at the tires, it's got pneumatic tires on it, it's got headlights on it, it's got a starter and a generator, it's real classy. It's got a crank in it, on the front of it, just in case they don't trust the starter motors. <laughs> uh, it's left-hand drive, four-speed transmission, it's got a dual reduction uh, differential what we call a carrier for uh, transfer of power between the prop shafts and the axles on to, out to the wheels. Okay, and what makes this truck different than the other two? Well, one of them has a probably wooden spoke wheels and solid rubber tires, and I think one has steel spoke wheels and solid rubber tires. Very often in the early days, they had solid tires on the back and pneumatic tires up front to make it a little easier to ride. So out of the three versions, then this is the most modern one? This is the most modern one of the three, yeah. These were built from the late 20s up until the uh, late 30s. All a right. lot of them were built. Well, thank you. Now I know a little bit more about these trucks. Well, Elizabeth, I think Snowy's taking us for a ride now. <laughs> I think so, too. Snowy, where are you going to take us in this 1905 Manhattan? Not very far and not very fast, <laughs> but we'll sure walk, we'll sure ride around with a grin, Elizabeth. <laughs> we'll sure ride around with a grin. This is a three-speed, four-cylinder, chain, uh, chain drive, and most of the vehicles in the early days were chain drives. Chains were very, very popular. This is right-hand drive, and you often wonder, well, why right-hand drive? Well, we think that the gals that got on the bus over in Manhattan all had long white gowns, white stockings, white shoes, lots of white frilly petticoats, and 
if they had to climb out of the street side of the bus, it would be a mess. So they had the driver, and the driver could stay cleaner. He climbed down the right-hand side, stepped back, and let the gals off out of all the seats in the back. Now this bus supposedly spent its, its summer times in Prospect Park in New York City, and in the wintertime they loaded it on a freighter and took it down to Louisiana oh. or someplace down south. So this worked year round then? This worked year round. And it also ran for several years in the Greenfield Village in the Ford, Henry Ford Museum. Wow. A lot of history behind this vehicle. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, how many, this is a lot of passengers. I'm holy man. I don't want to. Yeah, I think it's 24, it 26. 24. I think so. All right. Well, Snowy, we're off to the fire. Tell us about this fire engine. We're all ready to go. Well, this fire engine quite, has quite a history. Uh, it did things other than go to fires. This was built during the First World War and supposedly was one of several that sat on the docks in Baltimore, Maryland after the war was over. And the city of Baltimore bought what we would say war surplus, bought several of these rigs and used them as dump trucks for a few years. And then they converted them into fire trucks. When they, they used them as fire trucks for a lot of years, and then when they got through with that and decommissioned them, they made them into museum pieces. And you own one, huh? And they gave us one. We're well, tickled it's... with it. It's a beautiful truck. Now this, remember the the other late ACs have a a fin type right. fan that goes around the flywheel. This has a big cast iron fan that's driven by a link leather belt oh, wow. that goes down around the clutch. Wow. Just like a big cast iron fan. A pretty interesting design on all this. And there's two transmissions in here. One for the pump and one to make it go. Right. Wow. All right. Thanks a lot, Snowy. Starts right up and takes you to the wherever We're you're going. Going to a if fire. You're going slow. <laughs> you don't want to be in a hurry to get to the firehouse. <laughs> Elizabeth, what are you gonna? What do you have to say about this? You look great with a fire hat on. You're number two, huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, I don't have anything to say about this one. I'm just along for the ride. There you go. <laughs> you, you you're on fire today. <laughs> Well, my friends, we're wrapping up this edition of Southern Country here at the Mack Truck Museum in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Snow, you've been a lively tour guide today. Before we go, I would like you to tell me all about this bulldog and how the bulldog became the icon of Mack. During the First World War, World War I, we, issued, we sent about 4,500 or over 4,000 AC trucks, what we call the bulldog, working trucks into the armed forces. Britain bought a, got about 1,500, and the British engineers that worked on them and tested them, and the drivers that drove them said that the Mac AC had the tenacity of a bulldog. And that was good praise because it, at that time, and I guess it still is, is the symbol of Great Britain was a bulldog. So shortly after the First World War, Mac decided to settle on the word Mac and that the bulldog would be the symbol. And the bulldog has been on the sides or on the hood of trucks ever since, and still is, and will be for a long time. Well, I'm glad you explained that to me, because I always liked the bulldog, but I didn't know why it came to be. Yeah. And uh, Snowy, you also have a website. Can you tell us what the website is? Yeah, MacTrucks.com.